How does the sun warm the earth? Please record the learning objectives for this video before you begin taking notes. You may want to pause the video here to write these down. Recall the different layers of the atmosphere. Troposphere, stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. These layers are thermal layers, designated as, designated as such based on the temperature trends that occur in that layer. The thermal characteristics of each layer is determined by how the gases in that layer are affected by the energy from the sun. Each layer of the atmosphere interacts in unique ways with the sun's energy. We will focus on the troposphere and the stratosphere for this topic. Solar energy reaches Earth by traveling through space. You'll recall that radiation is the transfer of energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. So sun's energy comes to Earth through radiation as electromagnetic waves. The electromagnetic spectrum, sometimes called the EM spectrum, is the range of electromagnetic waves as they are placed in order of increasing frequency. There are low-frequency, long-wavelength radio waves, to the mid-frequency, visible light, to the highest frequency, very short wavelength, very high energy, X-ray and gamma rays. These two are blocked completely by the thermosphere. A couple of terms that you'll encounter when learning about the sun's energy on Earth are insulation and albedo. Let's discuss these before we move on. The term for the solar energy that reaches Earth is insulation. You can think of this word as being short for incoming solar radiation. The insulation that affects Earth's surface and atmosphere consists of ultraviolet, visible light, and, and infrared. What happens when this energy hits the surface? Solar energy that reaches the surface can be absorbed or reflected. Different surfaces will absorb or reflect different amounts of solar energy. The whiter the surface, the more reflection, and the darker the surface, the more absorption. Look at the picture of the two different garage roofs. We know the mantra that the darker surface will be hotter than the neighboring white surface because it's absorbed more of the sun's energy. But how can we tell for sure? Look at the infrared picture of the two roofs. Notice that the white surface now appears a darker color. That's because the coloring applied to the infrared camera shows the hottest surfaces in the yellow to white range and the cooler surfaces closer to blue. That's what albedo is, the amount of reflection a surface has. The white roof has a higher albedo than the darker roof. Now let's discuss the energy that gets to Earth. UV, ultraviolet energy. We know about this because it causes sunburns. Luckily, only about 10% of the ultraviolet energy reaches the surface because ultraviolet is toxic to living cells. It carries more energy than visible light. We use it in special machines to kill bacteria. In addition to sunburns, too much exposure to UV can cause skin cancer. Some exposure to UV is good for you, though. About 15 minutes a day helps your skin produce vitamin D. Ultimately, if UV were not mostly filtered by the atmosphere, terrestrial life on Earth would not exist. Thankfully, there's ozone in the stratosphere. But what is ozone? Oxygen normally occurs in the atmosphere as the molecule O2. It's very stable and it takes a bit of energy to break the bonds of this molecule. Ozone is a type of oxygen molecule that has three oxygen atoms bonded together. Its chemical notation is O3. Oxygen is highly energized in the stratosphere by the incoming UV energy from the Sun. This energy splits some of the O2 molecules and causes the single oxygens to bond with other O2 molecules, forming the O3, or ozone. 
This layer of ozone formation winds up absorbing most of the UV light, preventing it from reaching any lower than around 40 kilometers. This is the energy that makes the temperatures of the stratosphere rise from negative 56 degrees Celsius to a balmy negative 2 degrees Celsius. Let's talk about what other forms of electromagnetic energy get through the atmosphere. Visible light is the electromagnetic energy we can see. It is in the range of wavelengths between the higher energy UV and the lower energy infrared. Notice the colors of the visible light nearest these bordering wavelengths, ultraviolet next to violet, infrared next to red. Not only do we use visible light for sight, but plants use visible light for photosynthesis. About 40% of the incoming visible light reaches the surface. The rest is reflected by clouds, ice, and other high albedo surfaces. Remember, albedo is reflected light. Infrared. These are the wavelengths below red in the EM spectrum. Infrared is energy we can feel, but not see. Notice the picture. You can see the fence, but what is inside? Using an infrared camera, a person can detect the heat or infrared energy that objects emit. When objects absorb energy, like the ground for instance, it re-radiates the energy as infrared. This is why you can feel heat coming up off rocks or concrete. You are feeling the infrared radiation. So when we look at Earth's energy balance, we consider the combined three electromagnetic energies that get into the atmosphere, a little UV, the visible light, and infrared to be the incoming solar energy. This is balanced with outgoing energy that is reflected and re-radiated. The energy balance is how the Earth maintains a stable average temperature and therefore a stable climate. Scientists are spending a lot of time and energy studying this to understand how the energy balance affects weather and ultimately climate conditions on Earth. One of the things that keeps climate stable is the presence of greenhouse gases. Earth's surface absorbs and re-radiates much of the sun's EM energy that gets through the atmosphere. Without greenhouse gases, however, that warmth would just be re-radiated back out to space as soon as it became dark. That's because most of the air is not affected by infrared. Nitrogen and oxygen, which make up 99% of the atmosphere, are transparent to infrared energy, which means the energy just goes by them without affecting the molecules. The mo these molecule bonds are strong and stable, not allowing energy like infrared to affect them. Carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane, however, respond differently than the nitrogen and the oxygen in the atmosphere. These greenhouse gases absorb the infrared energy being radiated by the ground and hold it for a bit before re-radiating it back to the atmosphere. This occurs because the bonds of the greenhouse gas molecules allow for some vibration to occur. And when the molecule encounters infrared energy, this energy is absorbed by the vibration of the bonds in the molecule. The presence of greenhouse gases accounts for the warmth that is held in the atmosphere making Earth a hospitable temperature for life as well as compatible for liquid water to be on the surface. Without it, Earth would be much colder, with no liquid water. The energy from the sun that is held in the lower few kilometers of the atmosphere by the greenhouse gases is what drives the water cycle and ultimately weather.